<laughs> Let me tell you about something that we're doing on Friday that um, you have to watch because I, I, uh, I taped it last <laughs> night and I, I went in um, not knowing exactly what to expect, but I came out feeling, and I mean this sincerely, extraordinarily guilty, extraordinarily stupid, um, and blind. I have been saying for a while, we need to find the next George Washington. In fact, I've been saying it for three years. We have to find the next George Washington. I don't know who the next George Washington is going to be. We need to have it. Maybe we have to grow our own kid to be the next George Washington. Um, I believe I found George Washington. Now, I don't know about his policies, but I do know about his character now that I did not know. I've told you before about this man's character, but I had zero idea what it really was. I asked the... Um, Talking about Barack? Yeah. I asked the Blaze uh, about three weeks ago. I said, I want to tell the stories that nobody is telling on Mitt Romney. Everybody is going in. And, and what started this was, what was the last thing they dug up? Oh, the, the cancer, that he caused cancer from somebody eight years after the, he fired them. And oh, he killed my wife. He wasn't even there when, was, when the guy lost his job either. So. Right. I mean, he had nothing to do with it. And yeah. I thought to myself, what is it? I mean, this guy is squeaky clean. If you're coming up with stuff like that and the dog on the roof and the haircut that probably didn't happen, according to the family, probably didn't happen in 1965, this guy is squeaky clean. So I asked my staff, go find the stuff on Romney, the good stuff. Because if there's no bad stuff, I'll bet you there's good stuff out there that nobody's telling the story on. Well, we went uh, and we went looking. And I will tell you that I don't think the Romney campaign, I don't know because I'm not a producer, but the, my impression is the Romney campaign wasn't really helpful on this um, because I don't know if they even trust us or, you know, Romney is also the kind of guy that doesn't like to talk about all this stuff, but he should. You watch Friday's show. We brought in, what, six or seven people that didn't know Mitt Romney but whose lives have been changed by Mitt Romney. I think only one of them knew Mitt Romney. Life has changed because of him. There's a story of a guy in um, uh, Boston. He runs a vet hospital. He tells the most compelling story uh, I've ever heard about any politician, ever. It starts out the way normal politician stories start. Ted Kennedy was coming over to this vet hospital. He spent 30 minutes. The press was all there. He took a tour of the hospital. A couple of weeks later, Mitt Romney, who's running against him, comes in. He takes a tour of the hospital. But he says, can I, can I see your books? And he goes into his office. And he sits with, the, with this hospital's books for 40 minutes. No press is around. He just wants to look at the, the ledger. He finishes, closes up the books, and he says, you run a very good place, very tight, very good. Then he takes a, a tour, and it's an, uh, like I think another hour of the tour. So he spent an hour and 40 minutes, and he's asking in-depth questions. The last question he asks when the press is around, the last question he asks is, so what, um, what, are you, uh, what, do, what are you lacking? What do you need help with? The guy says, milk. He says, what do you mean, milk? He says, milk. I, 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 the vets need milk. And Romney does a really awkward, you know, <laughs> joke where he says, well, maybe we should teach everybody here how to milk a cow. <laughs> and the press is there. Click, click. And when he leaves, so the press comes up to the guy and says, did he just say that vets should be taught to milk cows? And he's like, and, and the guy who runs the place, who was on the show on Friday, was a little pissed. And he's like, yeah, yeah, he did. Was he joking? I, I don't really know. I mean, he's. Had a weird sense of humor. I, I I don't know. And he was kind of pissed. So they run with this story, and it's it's all over Boston. Milk Ro uh, Mitt Romney says uh, veterans should have to milk cows. Romney calls him up the next morning. Now, here's where it gets good. Romney calls him up the next morning. And first of all, if that happens to me, I feel so stupid. And I don't, I, I, I probably me, I probably want to avoid making the call to the guy and say, hey, I'm really sorry, man. I didn't mean that. I mean, it takes a lot to say, and just, I mean, otherwise you just, like, get past it. Just move past it. He calls him up, and he says, hey, listen, man, I, I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm not asking for anything. I just want you to know it's my fault. I said it. I meant it as a joke, but it was really stupid of me. And now I've brought, now I brought you know, um, dark things to your, your place, and you're doing such great work, and I'm really, really sorry. 
I'll, I'll try to help you with the milk. I'll see what, I'll see if, you know, there's things I can do to help you. I'm really sorry. Guy, he hangs up the phone and, and we were talking about last night and he hangs up the phone kind of like this. Uh, okay. Thanks a lot, politician. And hangs up the phone. Friday comes, the milkman comes. Milkman comes. This is what the vets needed. They needed 7,000 pints of milk a week. Milkman shows up, 7,000 pints. The, the head of the VA hospital says, where'd all this come from? He said, anonymous donor. Now, the guy didn't put it together. He's like, wow, that's great. Next week, 7,000 pints of milk. Still an anonymous donor? Yep. Next week, 7,000 pints of milk. Goes on for three months. 7,000 pints of milk. He says to the milkman, who's doing this? Uh, I don't know. Just somebody who doesn't want to be known. Goes on for another three months. 7,000 pints of milk every single week. Anonymous donor. Who's doing it? Don't know. Goes on for another six months. It's now a year. 7,000 pints of milk. Come on, man. Tell me who did it. Goes on for another year. Now the milkman is retiring. It's been happening for two years since the incident. Now the milkman is retiring. He says, come on, man, you got to tell me who's delivering the milk. Who's paying for the milk? And he's like, the guy doesn't want it to be known. You have to tell me. It's been two years. Come on, tell me who's doing it. It's Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney was writing a personal check and didn't want anybody to know for two years and provided the vets with all of their milk in Boston. Now, Mm. here's where it really gets amazing. When Romney becomes governor... He sends, uh, he sends a bill through to help this VA hospital. And he takes and he sends, you know, they send in a proposal. And then the government comes back and says what they're going to do. What the government said they were going to do, they, he changed some of the numbers and did some, th- some things. He took care of all of the food costs. And he said it was like down to the dollar. He said, Romney remembered looking at our books, did the calculations in his head and covered our food and milk. He said, you want a mechanic on the economy? It's this guy. He went and he said, the only politician that's done it, he went and he looked at the books first. He wanted to see what we were doing and how effective we were. He said then, beyond that, the milk. He did that and he didn't want anything, he didn't want anyone to know. He said, anybody tell you this? Anybody cover this story? He said, no. The stories you'll hear on Friday are available. Our people found them. And we didn't send investigators. Nobody's going through anybody's garbage. We just started to look. And the stories we found, I'm telling you, I apologize to Mitt Romney and his family for being so blind and not seeing who he was. That does not mean I'm going to agree with all of his policies. But I am blind. I have been saying we need to find George Washington a man of true character and honor and decency. When you watch the show on Friday, you will, I'm, I'm convinced you will feel exactly the same way I do. How have we, how miss, how misguided have we been? How blind is our press? How treasonous is our press that this stuff is out there? And this is only one, this is one show. I'll bet you I could do a week of these shows. These are, this isn't like, okay, can we stretch this? This is all we could put in on one show. That's a lot like uh, what Barack Obama did. He's got a brother in Kenya who lives in a mud <laughs> hut and 75 cents a month. And he didn't do anything about it. Mm-hmm. But he didn't want anybody to know about that either. So he didn't talk about it. Wow. He didn't, yeah. t- he didn't step up. And- he also had a, uh, an uncle who lives on the streets in, I think it was Cleveland, and uh, destitute, homeless. He probably oh, tried to take credit for that, though, and, and tout himself. No, he didn't do anything. Oh, my gosh. But he didn't say anything about it either because wow. he didn't want anybody to know. That's honorable. And the only way this any of this came out was his illegal alien aunt, whom he loves and writes about in the book, uh, surfaced uh, living in poverty. And uh, he had done nothing for her, too. But he didn't say anything because oh. he didn't want anybody to know. Wow. So it's a lot like that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really a lot amazing. like that. Don't miss this show on Friday. It's on the Blaze You talk TV. about a man who is his brother's keeper. <laughs> no, it no. is Mitt Romney. No, you, no, no. no. You, you won't believe the stories. You won't yeah. believe the stories of this guy. I didn't believe them. I felt like a worthless worm. 
I, I really felt like the least charitable, the least active. I mean, here's a guy who's doing all kinds of stuff. And he there's a story that, that happened midnight. Somebody calls and says, need your help. He says, send your son over. Son comes over. I'm telling you, this guy's counsel to this other man's son will blow you away. And the son is on the set, and he said, my life changed. My life changed. And I'm, <clears throat> man, I, I cannot tell you the feelings that I had during this hour. I apologize. I apologize for being so blind. I expect politicians to be nothing but politicians. This man may be a politician on some things and, and behave the way normal politicians do on stage, but when nobody's watching... He is not a politician. He is a man that I would strive to be like. It is something that, honest to God, that's what our president used to be. Somebody that you would look to and say, I think I, I can be better. If he can be like that and he's this busy, I can be better. Please watch Friday show.